in this. In John chapter 7, verse 37, it starts and goes back to verse 39, I think it is, all the way through. But it says that on that final day of the feast, he stood up and said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me. And he said, and out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This he spoke of the Spirit, which had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet been glorified. Think about that. That's what Jesus promised, rivers. You know, it's sad because it seems like a lot of Christians think that he gave us droppers of living water. He didn't, he didn't come and put a dropper in you so you can drip living water. He put rivers in you. Not one, rivers, plural. A river of healing, a river of deliverance, a river of provision, a river of peace. All of these were out of the Spirit. This is the Spirit of God he's talking about. And the Spirit of the living God is the Spirit of Jehovah. All of these different Jehovah names, every one of these, these 16 names, means there is at least 16 rivers flowing out of any Christian. But the sad part to me is that so many Christians don't realize it. And they always act like they've got to go to somebody else. The, The heart of Christianity is that you are connected to him. Not, and understand, we have a mediator, one mediator, Jesus Christ. I'm not a mediator for you. Nobody else is a mediator for you. Only Jesus is a mediator. In the Old Testament, where they had priests and they had the high priest and they had all these different levels of things that they had to go through. But with us, man, we just skip right to the head of the line. We just get put right in contact. And now we have direct contact with the God of the universe. God of the universe says. That's our connection. That's that life. You know, now we understand internet. You can have wireless. That's what the Holy Ghost is. He's just your receiver for that wireless internet called the Spirit of God. And now you are connected to God. And that connection means that all of his life flows through him, through the Holy Spirit, into you. Why? Because he's the vine, you're the branch. If Jesus lived today, he'd be talking internet instead of branch and vines and things like that. Why? Because that's what they understood. We understand now, even like with optic fiber and all that kind of stuff, fiber optics, We have to realize we have that connection with him directly. That at any time, anything going on in you, you can stop and you can say, you know what, I need some life right now. It could be that you're going through some mental thing where there's pressure and people around you and maybe trouble in your family or loved ones or something else. And you know, you just got to stop. You know, I just need some life in my soul. Man, this stuff is just wearing me down. And he can put that life right into you as soon as you acknowledge him and open up. Or you can just, as as I've told people before, it's like you can turn on that faucet and let those rivers flow out. Most people just keep it shut down. And the closest they get is on a Sunday morning when they're worshiping. And then they open that faucet a little bit and let a little bit come out. Or you can open it up quite a bit and let it just flow out. But the... But the sad part is most people will do it and then they'll go, okay, that's enough and turn it back off. But if you can turn that on and let that life come out of you, just leave it open. Then you walk in it. See, I see God in his, who he said he was in the instance of, say, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. He said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Now, understand That's a present tense. That means he's always the God that heals me. That means that his power, his life, his healing power is always flowing through me. So why do I ever need to get sick? See, it's one thing to get sick and get well and get sick and get well and get sick and get well. And it's great to know that if you get sick, you can get well. That's awesome. What's even better is leave it on and just stay well. If you can turn it on when you need to, you can leave it on. And that's called life in abundance. That's when you've got that life overflowing. And I will tell you, it's much easier to leave it on that will keep things from you 
Have you ever tried, let's say, a, you know, you, you look at a regular, just a faucet. The water's coming out. You try to push something up in that faucet with the water on. It's hard. Why? Because it pushes it right back out. Well, now, think in terms of a fire hydrant. How much harder would it be to push something into a fire hydrant? It'd be near impossible. That's what you've got. You, but the only thing is, you've got at least 16 different fire hydrants all on you just gushing out. Now, tell me how the devil is supposed to get some sickness on you whenever you're, that water is always coming out. You can just live in divine health. But before we can do that, we got to realize that God wants us well. That's a starting point for some people. And the bad part is, sometimes we've gone so far the other way that we can't even hardly picture it, what it would be like to just live in divine health. But when you spend most of your time around sick people, believe me, you've got to believe in divine health especially in today's world where there's so many things that are just contagious and everything else. And you can't have fear or you'll always be saying, you know, I'll just pray for you. I'll pray for you from here. You stand over there. Well, you're wasting your time. Why? Because if you're afraid of it, you don't have any faith in God as a healer anyway. That's why many times when somebody says this thing or that thing or this is contagious, I have to go right at it and have to get close to them and get my hands on them and feel their breath on my face. Why? Because I have to prove to this thing I ain't afraid of it. Why? Because I've seen God do it before. I've seen him heal. I've seen him deliver. And faith always charges in. Faith never retreats. So, I'm going to finish up 